So I feel like Mary always, or Martha, sorry, always gets the bad rap, right? She's like busy, and it's like almost like Jesus doesn't quite scold her, but like says, uh, you chose poorly. <laughs> but perhaps a question would be, uh, who are you? Are you Mary? Are you Martha? Or are you Lazarus? And you can decide which way Lazarus is, Okay. Because we didn't actually talk about that gospel today. It was the other option. Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. But we know that all three of these are always together in the gospel. And I think they each have something to share with us. We're here for defending the faith conference. And I got to tell you, honestly, that kind of concerns me at times. Because when I was in the parish ministry, I had a couple of people that, you know, thought they were great apologists, but really what they were were people with sledgehammers trying to knock the faith into you over the head. And to me, that's just like scary. And that's where Lazarus, Martha, and Mary teach us something today. See, we're all called to be people, uh, resurrected people, people filled with life, people glorifying God. And so often it's easy for us, I think, or at least myself, to fall into that trap of being like Martha where we've got to do all kinds of things and we want everything perfect and, you know, just exact. But we're also called to sit at the foot of the master, to be able to listen to the Lord, to be taught by our God. Could I help earlier kind of in the back listening a little bit to Dr. Mary Healy, and just kind of wondering, it's like, I wonder if that was what it was like for the disciples, to just be at the foot of Jesus, and he's teaching them, and their hearts just are constantly being stirred up and filled with excitement, filled with enthusiasm, opening themselves to that truth that the Spirit of God is upon them, as that Spirit of God is upon you and upon me. But the question becomes then, how do we respond to that Spirit? And that's where our first reading today gives us some real insights, right? Because we know if we're not motivated out of authentic love, then we can't share the faith. If we're not motivated out of love for Christ Jesus, it's going to be really hard to sit at his feet and listen to his voice and be taught by him. And even harder at times to be reproached when we're wrong in our approach. But if we don't have love for the Lord, we can't even serve because then we only become self-serving. And the last I checked, you and I were not the God of the universe. And so all three of these people teach us something about our faith and how appropriate as we start off this conference that you would come and we would come together to the altar of the Lord to be nourished and strengthened, to open our hearts to the word of God, to allow that word to penetrate and even prick our hearts at times. Not that we would be wounded, but that we'd be raised to newness of life, that we would be restored and it's set on fire, to be empowered and commissioned to go forth and proclaim the gospel. And whether we realize it or not, and whether we like it or not, we are constantly proclaiming a gospel, some form of the gospel with our lives. You walk into McDonald's to order a Happy Meal, if you get a Happy Meal, and you're proclaiming some sort of gospel with your life. If you go in there kind of, oh, come on, this line's so long, what's wrong with these people? Why isn't milkshakes working? (laughs) Right? You've been there. then we start sharing some sort of gospel. And if we wear anything that shows that we're Christian, that message starts to become confused for others. And if we walk in and now you're at Chick-fil-A, and even though they're really fast outside the inside, it just happened to be backed up. Been there as well, haven't you? (laughs) You can tell what my summer has been like, right? I don't eat out very often, okay? But again, how do you approach the situation? 
Are you able to approach it recognizing the dignity of the person before you? Being able to love on them, accept them where they're at, even if they've had a bad day or they haven't? Or are you like adamant that, no, I should have things my way right now, instantly? Come on, I got other places to go, people to see, the word of God to share with others. (laughs) It's happened, doesn't it? And do you see where the confusion begins to come in? That we profess one thing with our hearts, we come to the Lord, we sit at his feet, we say, Jesus, I love you unconditionally, I want to serve you, and then almost instantaneously, something trips us off, and we start to become like Martha, like, Jesus, come on, tell my sister to start doing something. What's wrong with her? My brothers and sisters, the expectations that we put forth on others, and the presumptions that we make might become our own downfall in being able to love people where they're at. And it is only by coming to the altar, it is only by coming to the feet of Jesus and listening to him that we're going to be able to grow in that charity, in that love that he has given to us first, in that love that actually allows us to continue in existence, in that love that we actually desire to see multiplied a hundredfold in the faith of others. And so how appropriate that we start off with Mass. Perhaps how appropriate that we have these three saints to be able to reflect on this day. And one last thing I want to challenge you at. The danger, perhaps, of coming to Mass and we just, we know what to do because we do it so often. And I want to ask you, what is the intention that you're offering this Mass for? Maybe you find yourself like Martha all the time, running and your head spinning so fast, trying to take children all over the place or grandchildren. Maybe your intention is, Lord, help me to slow down, to be able to hear your voice, to be able to choose the better part at this moment. There's probably a few people here that all you do is sit down and listen. And the Lord's inviting you to actually take greater action. Maybe that's your intention. Maybe for some of you, either you or someone you know you think is practically dead or spiritually dead. When the gifts are processed from the back, I'm going to invite you to intentionally, kind of with your mind, with your heart, put your intention in that procession, and let it come to this altar. As myself and my brother priests call down the Holy Spirit upon the gifts, and they become transformed from bread and wine into the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. Don't think for a moment that that same Holy Spirit doesn't desire to transform the intentions that you bring. And that that same Holy Spirit doesn't desire to transform your life that we would all become more conformed into the presence of Christ. For only then will we be be able to go forth to love each person that's before us. Only then will we be able to go forth and truly share the gospel of Christ, defend the faith out of compassion, out of mercy, out of truth, recognizing the incredible gift that God has given to you and to me.